Welcome to the National Atmospheric Release Advisory Center, located at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in Livermore, California. NARAC is a national and international scientific support center that predicts the effects of hazardous materials released into the atmosphere. The people who work at NARAC are atmospheric scientists, physicists, health physicists, chemists, mathematicians, computer scientists, and engineers. During an airborne hazard emergency or exercise, they quickly go to work in the operations center. The team uses weather data and an advanced computer modeling system to predict the spread of hazardous material in the atmosphere and estimate the potential health risks. This information helps inform emergency responders and government officials so that they can make the decisions that are necessary to protect people. But before an incident ever occurs, NARAC provides computer modeling tools and analyses of airborne hazards that inform emergency plans. In addition to advanced models, the center also develops simpler emergency response plume modeling tools for users outside of the center to run themselves. These tools provide fast initial predictions during an emergency and are used for emergency planning before an incident. The center was the brainchild of visionaries at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory and the Department of Energy, or the DOE, who in the 1970s recognized that there was a need to understand and predict the movement and health impacts of airborne hazards. Dr. Joseph Knox, working under Livermore Director Dr. Edward Teller, saw that this was a problem that a national laboratory could help solve by applying multidisciplinary science and Livermore supercomputers. Dr. Knox and other founders were the first ones in the world to take on the very difficult task of creating operational systems that could provide predictions of airborne hazards. These systems incorporated research on complex terrain, three-dimensional wind, and airborne plume dispersion computer models, along with current weather databases and models of human response to radiation dose. The near real-time model predictions of airborne hazards, along with field measurements, could be used to guide emergency decisions, such as whether people should shelter or evacuate, in order to help protect their health and safety. Then, in 1979, when the Three Mile Island nuclear power plant accident occurred in Pennsylvania, LLNL received a telephone call from DOE headquarters asking, could the center help? And how soon? The center became operational and worked around the clock for a two-week period with the same sacrifice and discipline found in other teams that dedicate themselves to emergency response. Using a newly developed computer modeling system, Livermore scientists generated maps that were used to guide DOE field and aerial measurement teams and to help state and federal officials in determining the impacts from the radiological material potentially released from the plant. Since then, the center has maintained and improved its operational capabilities, has continuously trained and prepared for emergencies, and has stood ready at any moment to respond to an incident. NARAC capabilities continued to advance throughout the 1980s. The second generation computer system provided huge advances in software automation, allowing for faster collection of weather data and running of computer models. The new system also provided more comprehensive terrain and weather databases so that NARAC models could be easily run anywhere in the US. The need for a sophisticated three-dimensional or 3D modeling system was made clear in 1986, when the worst nuclear power accident in history occurred at the Chernobyl plant in what was then the Soviet Union. That 3D modeling system was needed to track the radioactivity as it spread regionally in different directions over Europe. During the Chernobyl response, NARAC researchers adapted global scale models to track the radioactive cloud around the world. In addition, they used environmental measurements in Europe combined with the computer model simulations to provide the first estimate of a large release of radioactivity from the Chernobyl plant. This NARAC practice of using field measurements to validate and refine model predictions to make estimates of emissions ensures the most accurate predictions. Laboratory scientists have always worked closely with the Federal Radiological Monitoring and Assessment Center, which coordinates environmental radioactive contamination measurements during emergencies. FERMAC is led by DOE and the Environmental Protection Agency and was established after the Three Mile Island incident. Together, NARAC and FERMAC are leaders in fusing model predictions with environmental measurements to provide the most complete picture. 
In the 1980s, NARAC researchers continued to test models using data from scientific field experiments of atmospheric dispersion, including in complex terrain environments. NARAC continued to grow during the 80s and expanded its direct support to numerous sites throughout the DOE complex, Naval Nuclear Propulsion Program sites, and Department of Defense sites. In 1996, NARAC moved into a new, specially designed facility to house NARAC's staff, computer center, and operations center. This new facility, sponsored by DOE, ensured that NARAC would have the computing power and workspace it needed to meet growing demand and also provided backup electrical power if primary power was lost. NARAC took advantage of a revolution in weather forecast modeling as higher resolution regional weather models became more and more accurate and practical to use. To do this, DOE sponsored a new generation of NARAC models to produce higher resolution regional wind flow and dispersion predictions. During the 90s, NARAC modeled a major tire dump fire near Livermore and the massive oil field fires in Kuwait providing critical predictions about airborne hazards. NARAC's third-generation central computer system using the new NARAC models became operational in the year 2000. Then, 2001 brought the September 11th terrorist attacks and the anthrax-contaminated letters. These events heightened concerns and brought about expanded interagency cooperation in chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear counterterrorism. As part of that new focus, the Department of Homeland Security, the DHS, was created in 2002. Large national counterterrorism exercises, such as the Top Officials 2 exercise involving a hypothetical radiological dispersal device in Seattle, showed a need for improved coordination of plume modeling between federal agencies. DHS led the creation of the Interagency Modeling and Atmospheric Assessment Center, or IMAC, which was established in 2004 to meet that need. DOE and NARAC were designated as the primary provider of radiological and nuclear plume modeling capabilities for IMAC. As it had done since its inception, the center continued to provide detailed pre-incident analyses of the potential airborne impacts from different terrorist and accident scenarios. These analyses were used to help the nation, as well as individual facilities, develop emergency plans and prepare for threats. New web-based software tools provided much easier access to NARAC modeling tools and products and facilitated an explosion in the use of NARAC. The web also provided a method to quickly distribute NARAC, FIRMAC, and IMAC products through NARAC-hosted web tools. These easy-to-use tools led to dramatic growth in the use of NARAC throughout the DOE complex, nationwide, and internationally. On March 11, 2011, DOE activated NARAC after the earthquake and tsunami in Japan resulted in severe damage to the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. The center operated 24 hours per day, seven days a week for many weeks, providing hundreds of predictions about radiation levels near the site, nearby communities, the rest of Japan, and internationally. NARAC researchers were not only producing a record number of predictions, they were also producing many different types of predictions. NARAC was called to provide analyses of possible worst-case releases of radioactivity from the plant, analyses of past and current releases, and hour-by-hour -hour forecasts of atmospheric plume positions for possible new releases. These predictions were used to help guide government decisions on actions that might be needed to protect emergency responders and the public, including U.S. citizens in Japan. This simulation shows the airborne plume as red particles after they are emitted from the damaged plant, located in the center of the map. Most of the time, winds were blowing the plume out over the ocean, but at one point the winds shifted dramatically on shore. This was a critical time period when the plant released radioactivity that contaminated areas in Japan. Increased contamination occurred in areas where precipitation scavenging removed radioactive particles from the air and onto the ground. NARAC scientists predicted this contamination, which was also shown by measurements. Because plant conditions and emissions were unmeasured and unknown, DOE and the government of Japan used environmental measurements combined with model predictions to provide the only way to estimate the amount of radioactivity emitted from the plant. The center was also asked to predict the very low levels of radioactivity that were transported across the Pacific. In this animation, the different color particles represent airborne radioactivity emitted on different days. It shows the effect of the complex weather patterns. 
These predictions were later verified by small levels of radioactivity measured on the west coast of the U.S. Livermore scientists, working closely with DOE and other government agencies, leveraged their experience from the Fukushima emergency and other previous exercises and incidents over the years to improve the understandability and usability of NARAC and IMAC products. They are now able to tailor products for different types of users from field responders, to state and local officials, to senior federal officials, and for both technical and non-technical audiences. For example, they can tailor a product for senior federal officials who need high-level summaries in plain, non-technical language to answer key questions such as, what happened? What are the impacts to health and safety? And what key decisions need to be made to protect the people? To more quickly distribute predictions to emergency responders and officials, Livermore researchers developed tools to export hazard maps and reports quickly into DHS and FEMA information systems. Center staff have also continued to develop and deploy pre-incident emergency planning tools and analyses that show potential airborne hazard impacts, including model simulations for specific scenarios for typical weather patterns. In 2014, when a small amount of radioactivity was released at the Waste Isolation Pilot Plant in New Mexico, the plant and DOE asked NARAC to predict the potential downwind effects of the radioactivity. Using on-site weather observations and regional weather models, NARAC simulated the dispersion of airborne particles emitted from the plant, with particles initially being carried to the northwest of the plant and later being carried in other directions as the wind changed. Using plant measurements of emissions in the NARAC dispersion predictions, the center provided estimates of potential downwind effects of the radioactivity. NARAC predicted radiological dose for different areas, shown in shades of green on the right, and plant measurement data were used to show government agencies and the public that radiation dose levels were below levels of concern, even for long-term health risks. NARAC predictions were verified using environmental radioactivity air sampler measurements, and they were used to predict radiation dose expected at locations where no measurements were available. In 2017, NARAC analyzed the potential causes of low levels of ruthenium-106 radioactivity detected in the air over Europe at the locations shown by the small circles on the map. Mysteriously, there was no initial indication of the source of the release into the air. NARAC, as well as scientists in several other countries, analyzed the data and prevailing winds to determine a possible source. NARAC applied research techniques that use the air concentration measurements, weather models, atmospheric dispersion models, and innovative statistical methods, boosted by machine learning techniques, to estimate the probable release location, the amount of material released, and the time of release. The map shows the lower and higher likelihood areas for the release location. That same year, NARAC completed work on an operational, fast-running, high-resolution computational fluid dynamics model called AOLIS, sponsored by the Department of Homeland Security. This model is capable of simulating the details of dispersion and deposition of hazardous materials around buildings much more quickly than previous models of this type. NARAC researchers use AOLIS model simulations to determine the airborne spread and deposition onto buildings from hypothetical releases of potentially hazardous material in downtown city locations. AOLIS was also used to analyze potential low levels of contamination around buildings at the Department of Energy's Hanford site to help ensure safe operations there. Today, researchers continue to improve NARAC computer models, software tools, and operational capabilities. Updated models can be used to make more accurate predictions because they use more fundamental physics and higher resolution simulations. NARAC scientists are also conducting research on next generation nuclear detonation cloud rise, rainout, and fallout models, shown in the animation here. In other research, scientists are now able to simulate atmospheric flows from regional down to local scales simultaneously because of improvements in computer power and atmospheric modeling methods. The leftmost image shows a regional area of the south-central U.S. where weather is being simulated. At the same time, higher and higher resolution simulations are done, including the rightmost, highest resolution simulation that includes the details of flow around buildings, which is significantly influenced by weather in the larger areas. Scientists are validating the new computer models using historical and new field experiments. Additionally, researchers are incorporating uncertainty quantification and probabilistic and ensemble methods in weather and plume model simulations to be able to predict the range of possible outcomes. 
NARAC staff are also developing an improved fourth-generation operational central computer system with modern software technologies. This will enable use of the increasingly large volumes of geographical, meteorological, and field measurement data, and use of future advances in computer models. Looking back at what NARAC's visionary founders started, we can see what a monumental task it was, and how, over more than four decades, their vision was fulfilled and expanded upon by some very talented teams of people. This was done with focus on both operational emergency response and related research. This work was made possible by strong partnerships with operational and research organizations in the U.S. and around the world. Tomorrow, NARAC will continue to build on its original vision. In the future, we expect to use higher performance exascale computing. The center will produce higher fidelity models that are enabled by an increasing array of higher resolution data sources and advances in mathematical and statistical techniques, such as artificial intelligence. The center will continue to develop the next generation of operational scientists, software experts, and researchers who will develop and improve advanced training programs to maintain high levels of expertise in NARAC staff and in NARAC users. The center will continue striving to provide the best possible support to our users, sponsors, and partners, and to help protect people by providing accurate and easily usable predictions of hazards. Thank you very much for listening to our story. You can find additional information on our website at narac.lnl.gov.